Hi there, welcome to this course on AWS Core Services where you're going to learn about Amazon S3, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, Elastic Compute Cloud, Identity and Access Management, DynamoDB, Elastic Beanstalk and other services. My name is Harshit and I'm instructor for this class. I will be teaching various cloud services on AWS with my colleague Pranjal who is a subject matter expert on AWS and DevOps. Here in this class, you will learn a widely used cloud services on AWS with hands-on examples that could be used for preparation in AWS certification exams. You could use these concepts to help you prepare, practice and learn the concepts of various AWS core services. In this course, you will learn to create and customize Amazon S3 object storage services. You will learn to create identity and access management or IAM roles in AWS that can be used to integrate with other AWS services. You will learn to create and manage various network components like subnets, internet gateways and virtual private cloud using AWS VPC console. You could provision databases using AWS DynamoDB as a NoSQL database and perform various operations such as scan, query, filter and much more. Moreover, you would also learn to create and run instances for AWS Elastic Compute Cloud or AWS EC2 and you will learn to provision virtual machines for various server based applications on Linux, Windows and other environments. And you would also learn about Amazon Elastic Beanstalk for deploying and scaling your web applications and others. So if you are curious to learn these core cloud services on AWS, start learning right now. See you in the class. Hi there, welcome to this lesson where you are going to learn about creating an Amazon S3 bucket where you can store your files on the cloud. So let's start with this. Here just go to the services and browse over storage service and here the first service is Amazon S3. So S3 is short form of simple storage service that's a block storage and here you can create a bucket. So what is a bucket? Bucket is a logical folder or directory where you keep all your content. So bucket is the abstract form of uh, it's an abstract logical entity. So you can create multiple buckets on Amazon S3 uh, just provide with a name you have to select an Amazon region where this bucket will be stored your data will be stored so you can choose from various Amazon cloud regions like Virginia and other places and next uh, you may choose to block all kind of public access to this bucket directory or you can retain some access so if you want your bucket to be available on the public domains, it can be made available. Otherwise, you, you want to block, you can block it. And you can only access internally with your own cloud account. And then you can select the encryption or advanced setting. You can choose to have an object lock. And once you're done, just hit the create bucket and it will be available to you. And here we can find there are multiple buckets that's already created. And here we have created this Athena Data 101 and this is a bucket for here. And once you open the bucket, you got various properties, the file permissions to access this thing. You got various matrices, you can select this thing and you can any time edit some settings like public access. You can customize it later on. If you customize, you have to confirm. Otherwise, just leave it here. Maybe after you have created your bucket, you want it to be available by public domain. You can just set it there. You can have the cross origin resource sharing enabled. You can find a matrix here for performance indicators and other things. You can select the access points and here just go to the objects. If you want to create other folders or subfolders and upload different files here. So if you want to store some files on the Amazon cloud, S3 is the way to go. Even when you want to create an integrated application that requires some sort of data, uh, it could be linked with S3. 
say if you want to host a website and you have a database you can upload your data set on s3 bucket you can add multiple files as well that would contain the images uh, data set text other informations pdfs and other things and then you can use this amazon resource name or s3 ara and it could be connected to other services on the cloud like glue you can create a crawler with amazon glue and athena you can connect it to redshift or dynamo db databases and other places as well other services it could be used with a lambda as a trigger and other things here we have uploaded this file that's csv format and we got this destination uh, link that is s3 and here we got uh, this directory for this thing and here you got multiple kind of storage classes that you can choose if you want to have access your data very frequently you can choose the standard or if you want your data for archival purpose you can have the glacier and for the moderate levels you can have these things say for example if you want uh, your website uh, data to be available multiple times in a single day from across the globe it is very frequently accessed uh, then you can put it with a standard function and if you want it just for the record keeping you can keep it for the glacier so if your data is kept in the glacier a uh, read write permission to the, that bucket will be very minimal and you cannot edit it for certain parameters and it would be safe it would be considered as a vault and you can create multiple s3 bucket so it is one of the core services on aws and it is very widely used with other cloud services so once you are on the aws dashboard you can customize your bucket and go to actions and find various options so try to create your own s3 bucket keep learning and keep moving ahead
Hey friend, welcome back. In this lesson, you are going to learn about AWS EC2, which means Elastic Cloud Compute. It is one of the most powerful and commonly used AWS services. We all know that AWS provides a wide array of services from storage to networking, then database, then machine learning and analytics, and much more. This Amazon EC2 is the core compute component of any technology stack. With the help of it, you can easily create the virtual machine instance and easily configure the capacity by scaling up or scaling down the number of your instance. It also saves a lot of money as it eliminates your requirement to invest in the hardware equipments. So it saves you money, it saves you time as well because you can create as many as virtual machines within few clicks. In this lesson, we're going to create EC2 instance. So let's do it. So this is AWS Management Console. From here, you can find this EC2 service. Just tap there. This is EC2 dashboard. And here on the left pane, we'll get lots of options. So here comes the first step in the process to create a new EC2 instance. So you need to select the AMI, which stands for Amazon Machine Image. It is basically a pre-configured template that package all of the things which are required for your server. Here you will get options like SUSHE, Ubuntu, Microsoft Server, and various other AMI as well. You can even create your own AMI which later on I'm going to show you how you can create them. Here you can see that you will get some of the requirements while creating the AMI and also you can select the bit either you can select 64 bit or 32 bit. Here I'm going to use Ubuntu image okay. Now the second step is to select your instance type and here you need to select according to the four options given like CPU, memory, your storage and the networking thing. So here I'm going to use the t2.micro instance type where you will get one CPU, one JV memory and EBS pool. Okay. So basically you can find lots of instance type and if you're confused at which instance type you require, simply you can check it out the official documentation given by Amazon regarding this instance type. I don't know that how many instance types are there, but the list look too long and it may be more than 100. So here I'm going to choose this t2.micro which comes in the free tier. Then you need to select the step 3 to configure your instance detail and here I'm giving the number 1. And keeping all the settings like networking settings, shutdown behaviors and various other things to the default one. You can even choose to create a new file system, which here I'm not selecting it, okay? Now here comes another step, which is storage. Basically, there are two types of storages there. One is instance store volume, other one is Amazon EBS. In instance store volume, which is a volatile one, where you store something and it will gonna delete after the termination or hibernate or shutdown of your ECS instance, okay? And uh, the EBS is for persistent storage. The, the next step is add tags. So you need to add some metadata to your EC2 instance because while using this EC2 instance, you will require to assign some of things, like if you want to run the container inside it, if you want to run some web application into it, you need to have some tags so that you can attach with it and run them inside the EC2. Then comes the last step, which is step six, to configure the security group. Here, it is a kind of virtual firewall where you can set rules for controlling the traffic, whether it can be incoming or it can be outgoing. Okay, so you need to select the port, the protocols, the source, even you can add some descriptions into it. So here you will got option add rule to add whatever type you want to add and whatever protocol you want to choose, whatever port range you want to add and the source as well. 
and here you can also set some inbound rules outbound rules after the creation of ec2 instance as well so inbound is basically for ingoing oh sorry incoming traffic whereas outbound is for outgoing traffic okay now the last step which is review your instance launch and here you can see the whatever things which we done you can easily figure out here and if you want to do some changes some updates you can go back and update them so and here you will get an option to create a key pair or either you can choose the existing one let me explain you that what the hack is this key pair now if you your amazon ec2 instance is running and if you want to access it either using your cli or you want to use the putty or win SAP, you require some security credentials so for that you need to create this key pair where you need to put some name then you need to select the type which is rsa here it can be ed to something number and you can also select the private key file format as well so here i'm selecting this dot ppk format for my key pair and you need to keep one point in your mind that you need to store that particular private secret code very precisely okay if you lose them you can't access your ec2 instance either you need to create a new one or you can't use that particular key pair okay so here you can see it is still in the pending state and here you will get some public ip4 address some private ip4 address and various other things so while it is the process of the creation here inside the ec2 instance you can see that it is in a running state i don't think so that it is completely run oh yeah, yeah it now it is ready okay so now i'm gonna connect to this ec2 instance so there are some options so i'm going to choose the first option to access my ec2 instance with the help of amazon console and as you can see we are inside our ec2 instance we got some name ubuntu which is our ami the user of this particular ec2 instance and the ip as well you can see here so through it you can easily access your ec2 instance in the next part of the lesson i'm going to show you that how you can connect with this with your putty things okay putty or scp anything so let me do some basic uh, commands like who am I Ubuntu and this is the current directory where I am and so on That's all in next lesson. We will learn some more things about this EC2 instance So till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated All right in my previous lesson I have shown you that how you can create a simple EC2 instance and how to connect with it using EC2 instance connect now I'm going to use this SS client to access this EC2 instance. For it, you must have Putty installed in your system. And this is a URL through which we are going to connect with it. And for other two options, you can check it out in official documentation given by AWS. And this is Putty. Okay, you need to put that particular URL. And under this SSS option, you will get some option like auth. Here you need to attach the key pair, which either you can create while creating your ec2 instance okay or you can create after the creation of ec2 instance as well so once you have done all of the things i'm going to save this session okay so that the next time whenever i'm going to use this putty i don't need to configure all of this stuff so again and again i just go to that particular saved in sessions and we will in so so for the first time it will going to take time but it doesn't take too much time we are inside our ec2 instance you can see that we got the username for our ec2 instance the private the sorry the public ip as well oh this is a public ip i think it is a private ip okay once and two dot yeah yeah it is a private ip you can see here so let me show you that we are actually connected with this ec2 instance or not so here i want to show you that i have created one directory which is app here and you can see here that we have that particular app directory inside our WinSCP session and things like that. So, with the help of this putty, you, we can actually connect with this EC2 instance. So, in my upcoming lesson, I'm going to show you that how you can some applications inside the EC2 instance. So, before jumping towards 
creating your web application and running them i'm going to do some update for this ec2 instance okay so now i have updated all of the steps here okay and if you want to add some more thing you can use this sudo apt get and whatever library or whatever things you want to install you can add into it so that's all this is the lesson where i have shown you that how you can connect your ec2 instance with the help of putty okay so if you want to access in the gui way you can also use the win SCP as well okay and that's all so for now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hey friend welcome back in this lesson, I'm going to show you that how you can create and deploy a simple web application inside your EC2 instance. Here, I'm going to use the Flask framework, which is a Python-based web framework to create the web application very quickly and very easily. For demonstration purpose, I'm going to use a simple Hello World web application and we're going to deploy it and we're going to access a particular web application as well. So first of all, you need to create a new file just write give any name for your main file which is app.py here i've already created the web application simple web application the hello world one so i'm just gonna put this inside our newly created file okay here you can see we have imported the flask library then created an instance for our application then added some decorators and inside the decorators we have added some functions into it so what will going to happen like Whenever you're going to route for this particular base URL, which is slash here, which comes under the route, the decorators, then it will going to run this particular hello world function, and it will going to return this hello world string to the web page. And whenever uh, we're going to view our web page, we're going to have this hello world string written down that particular web page. Now the thing is, we are not going to run this application inside our local system so here you need to put some parameters inside the app.run function here you need to put the host name your port name and even i'm going to put this debug equal to true so you will be able to see that whatever things is happening behind the scene and if we got some error we could easily see them and try to figure it out as well so i have updated the content of our application here and the thing is we have to run this application now you can see that our application is now running now the thing is you need to access your web application so you need to go the main page of your instance and here we got our public URL to access our web application now here you need to add your port number as well okay so let's put the colon and put 8080 and here you can see the hello world application which we have created we are able to access it so that's all this is how you can create a simple python based web application deploy into your ec2 instance and access them as well so till then Keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated. Hi, and welcome back, friend. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to use Amazon Elastic Beanstalk to deploy and manage your web application. So let's create one. First of all, you need to provide the name for your web application. And if you want to add some metadata like tags, you can also add them. Now here, you need to select the platform. It can be .NET, Docker, Go, Java, Node.js, Python, and so on here I'm choosing this Python platform here and I'm going to run this Python on Amazon Linux 2 okay and uh, here in this configuration section you will get some options like software through which you can edit the Python versions and then there is option for instances capacity load balancer rolling update and deployments these are all settings related to the EC2 instance which we're going to create after you're going to initiate this Elastic Beanstalk environment, there is option for monitoring, manage updates, notifications, database, and lots of other options are available here too. 
Now the best part is why I recommend to use Elastic Beanstalk rather than using the Elastic Cloud Compute because in, if you're going to deploy any web application with the help of EC2, there you need to configure lots of things like you need to configure the EC2 instance, then security group, the S3 bucket, CloudWatch, CloudFormation, domain name for your web app and lots of other options. Now with the help of this EC2 Beanstalk, sorry, Elastic Beanstalk, this all job will be going to be done automatically. It will going to provision your web application, going to add load balancing, auto scaling things into your web application and as well as it will also monitor your application health and lots of other things will be going to manage by this AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So that's a cool thing about using this Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. It is just like a EC2, you know. This Elastic Beanstalk is also, you can count it as a compute service just like the EC2, okay. Now, the other thing which I need to mention here is like uh, with the help of Elastic Beanstalk, here you don't need to manage all the infrastructure things. So the charges which will be going to be incurred will be according to the instance which are created through this Elastic Beanstalk. Like it will going to create instance for EC2. Then it will going to detect the standard charts which are related to the EC2. Okay. And like S3 bucket and the route and lots of other instances which will be going to create it with this Elastic Beanstalk environment. That all things will going to incur a charge a basic standard charge using this elastic beanstalk there is not any charge is direct there it is basically dependent upon the all the services which are attached to this elastic beanstalk environment okay now that's how you can easily run your web application without handling the infrastructure things so i think that that's enough for uh, to give a clear view of what is lasting B stock and how it saves our lot of time and that's a, a different advantage of this elastic beanstalk over ec2 now you can see on my screen like first of all it waited for this ec2 instance to be launched now once your ec2 instance launched so it created a security group security group is, is just like a virtual firewall where you control the traffic which like uh, any kind of traffic like incoming or outgoing traffic by setting some rules okay then you can see that it created a s3 bucket as well as for storing the environment data okay now it is still creating a environment and i don't know that how much time it will going to take but yeah but i think all of the things is now set up it created a brock file as well now the thing is I have used this AWS console way to create the Elastic Beanstalk thing okay. Now if you want to use the ELB command to run your web application you need to create the proc file by yourself. So that's the benefit of using this Amazon console web console to create the Elastic Beanstalk services. Now you can see that it is showing that our web application health is like it's good and it is running the sample application which we have chosen at the time of initializing the elastic based on environment then you can see there there is a platform is there as well which is python here now instead of using the sample application if you want to deploy your own web application then you need to compress your project file into zip format and you need to simply upload it from here okay and your application will be there with another url you can see now here you can see that there is a url is given which is aws web app dash env dot then some random things is there with the location name as well the reason name which is selected which is us east one the virginia one the north virginia and then elasticbeans.com in case if you want to add some custom domain name you can also do so okay and you can see on the left side there is an options like application versions saved configurations these are things which we can do from there and 
basically the main thing is to set up the AWS web app environment where we did all of the things okay now there is an option you can see like configurations logs health monitoring alarm manage updates so this is this makes our work uh, much easier comparatively to work with another compute service like EC2 or container you can see now in, inside this recent events table you can see that all of the events which occurred during the creation of this Elastic Beanstalk environment okay so here you can get each of them and all the details you can have from here okay that what are the AWS resources are created while creating this AWS environment okay now this is the configuration which I was talking all about here you, need, you can edit the capacity as well the rolling update and deployment things okay now here is logs to generate off you need to actually take a request and then it's going to generate a log for you now here this is the health overview of my application okay and you can see the utilization of my web application you can see the environment health cpu utilizations the network things also if you want to add some alarms you can also add some alarms up there and that's it this is how your elastic beanstalk things look like now um, let us see that how this web application look like you can see this is a front page of the sample application which i have deployed okay now in the next lesson i'm going to show you that how you can deploy your own web application to this elastic beanstalk thing till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hi and welcome back friend in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can deploy a sample application and to deploy on amazon elastic beanstalk and now in this particular lesson we're going to focus on our own web application rather than using the sample application here i'm gonna use our own web application to be deployed on amazon elastic beanstalk now here i have created a simple hello world application which is uh, basically uh, developed with the help of flask flask library is a uh, web-based framework through which you can deploy web application very quickly and very easily so this is the url which i have got and let us check it out that this is how my web application looks like hello world okay now i'm gonna put this web application into amazon elastic beanstalk and uh, check it out that how it will gonna look like okay now just give it a name for your application name and the application tags if you want to add into your web application so that it, it is a good practice like if you want to add some tag it is a like good practice because you can easily monitor that particular your app your instance into your cloud browser. and uh, if you want to put some restrictions you can put easily okay now i have again selected the platform python which is now instead of using the sample application code here i'm going to give my own source code so you can you either use the local file or you can use the s3 url okay the public s3 url so here i'm going to use the local file which i have compressed into the zip file format okay now this particular zip file gonna upload okay and uh, that's all now we have successfully uploaded our zip file and now this time we're going to deploy our own application into this amazon elastic beanstalk now here again i'm going to choose the free tier preset because if you're going to select other tiers then it will going to incur a high charge okay because uh, many of the services will going to be run and it will be a little bit difficult to manage them okay in case your application have any database you can also add that particular thing from here as well now as you can see the creation process has been started and it created the ec2 instance and launched that particular instance then set up the security group 
then load balancer group auto scaling group cloud watch and various other things now all the things have been set up and you can see that our application health is okay it simply means that there is no problem while running our web application on amazon elastic beanstalk now you can see we got some url and oh that particular string the hello world string is there now this is very very simple you can see either you are choosing this python platform or any other platform it is very easy to deploy any application on elastic beanstalk and that's the cool thing and that's why i generally use this elastic beanstalk while running any web application okay now I have already told all the things which I think that may be considered as important thing like you don't need to uh, manage all the infrastructure things while using this EC2 Beanstalk like you don't need to provision anything you don't need to put load balancing auto scaling monitor your application health this all things will be automatically done by Amazon Elastic Beanstalk and you just need to focus on like write a code to write a awesome web application not like me which i have created the hello world simple web application you can count it as a sample application as well because there is no functionality into it so if you're going to put some functionality into it that's the point of having a web application on elastic beanstalk okay now this is cool okay you can see the events from here the configuration settings from here if you want to do some changes like your requirement is now high you can choose the capacity as well okay and this is the health so you can explore lots of options and i don't think so that it may take a time while learning this elastic beanstalk because the learning step is very low here if you already have familiar with ec2 and other aw resources then it will be quite easy for you to deploy something into this AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, so that's all. So till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated. Hey, friend, welcome to this lesson where we're going to learn about various kinds of networking services on Amazon Web Services. So let's start with this. So this is a AWS Web Console where you can navigate to the Services panel to see through various services. So here in this lesson, we are going to explore various kinds of VPC services on the VPC dashboard, virtual private cloud. So when you scroll down over the services panel, you got uh, networking and CDN, content delivery network services. So here you got various kinds of services and let's start with VPC. VPC or virtual private cloud is one of the most important uh, service on AWS that's widely used. So on the right hand side, you can see there are various cloud regions and you can deploy your VPC anywhere in any region on the cloud. Okay, so VPC is one of the core services that is very important if you look for AWS service uh, certification exams such as Solution Architect, uh, Cloud Practitioner and other exams. So it is one of the crucial things. So if you are going to deploy your real life applications on the cloud, uh, networking must be on your mind even if you are not a networking professional you must be aware of a few of these things okay so when you are using a ec2 service or other services you would require this thing so don't panic uh, let us do, we are going to just explore various services here uh, that you can do with the vpc dashboard such as subnets route table internet gateways and other things here so VPC allow you to manage uh, various networking uh, entities together on a single dashboard. So it can be easily managed without any much effort. Uh, if you have a background in networking and you're working in an organization that requires cloud as a networking implementation, you could do a lot of things here. Okay, so for any reason, you can explore. So there are a lot of options here. Uh, if you're a security professional, if you're looking for a security role, uh, you could harness various kinds of networking implementations. You can control where and how your traffic flows to your web application on the cloud. 
you can control each and everything you can always monitor it if you want to go in depth you can choose cloudwatch or other services so here let's take uh, the existing vpc so when you create an aws account you by default get a default vpc uh, this is the default one and you can always create multiple vpc so vpcs are generally charge free until they are connected to any other aws services so you can create a large amount of vpcs on the cloud and here in the vpc we got multiple subnets and here we got uh, six different subnet groups and you can customize each one of them here are various actions that you can perform if you select any subnet you will find all the details here such as arn amazon resource name the subnet id that can be used to link arn is a very important thing if you are using a command line interface or you want to integrate this service to any other service you can use it or creating some uh, application so here uh, you are going to learn these things and these are the route tables and other things that you can customize here so aws allows you to uh, visually manage everything that goes on the back end and you can visualize how your back end implementation would work how your network things will look like you can customize each subnet by going to the uh, actions or you can always create a new subnet so you can create a routing table how your traffic will be routed and you can create an internet gateways how it will be connected and you can have dscp client uh, elastic ips you can have static ips as well you can have endpoints you have managed prefix and different things here so if you want to create something here you can analyze um, something you can run reachability analysis and different kind of testing as well so uh, if you already know a lot of networking concept uh, you would you just need to uh, go through various services find various options and you will be easy to implement these things and otherwise just stay focused on what you want to do don't uh, if you are not sure about what uh, settings you should do uh, just go with the default in here okay so when you create a vpc uh, a respective subnet will all uh, automatically be created so you do not need to uh, create a subnet uh, alone and even if you want to customize it you can always add on or revert back to the default settings and if you're sure you can always customize everything otherwise just go with the default so here if you want to edit the inbound rules you can go these things you got various kind of options here you can select all traffic or custom tcps uh, icmp clients secure shells telnet different protocols you can customize you can also define your own custom protocol and customize these things you can provide the source ip address the you can either decide whether to block this kind of traffic or allow so if you have some kind of list although you can implement these kind of things in the security services as well using aws firewall and other things but if you want to control this thing to the networking level using inbound rules or these things you can customize this thing so aws uh, sometimes allow you to have multi layer of security models so it is better when you are implementing a security things on the cloud even if you're secure if you're not a security professional security must be your concern if you are a solution architect if you are a network engineer or anyone uh, you should design a system that is robust enough to uh, handle a lot of uh, things messy things around so go through these things it will be very useful and also if you are uh, setting for the examinations aws examinations there is no shortcut you have to just explore various services find various options and test it how it works this will be a practical knowledge that would be more reliable in your job profile as well as certification exams here you can also customize outbound rules you can set it to default and otherwise just move on so once you create a vpn you based on the region you can customize this thing in the coming lessons you will be learning about uh, how to create a vpn subnets route tables internet gateways how to connect with the ec2 and other things so this is all 
you can also connect with a network firewall and other things so just explore vpc dashboard and other networking services dive deep into various concepts and it can be used for security as well as other professions keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a virtual private cloud or vpc on aws so let's start with this as you can see here we have logged into the aws console and launched our vpc service so once you log into it you will find this dashboard on the left hand side you got various options where you can create your own vpc subnet route table and much more so just go to the vpc options and here you can see we have one default vpc enabled that is there available once you create an aws account and it is by default next we can create multiple vpcs and just go to create vpc to create a new one and you can use it for various kinds of aws services on the cloud so as the name suggests it is a virtual private cloud so you define your own networking specifications and will be created your vpc will have a different subnet and other options as well and here it, we just need to provide a name for it uh, just provide some name and just give it a name it infra uh, we are providing next we need to define two different ip cidr blocks for ip version 4 uh, we can provide some block here i'm using 10.0.0.0 slash 60 and next for ip version 6 you got three different options either you can go with a no option no no cidr block it will directly move all the traffic to ip version 4 or you can use the amazon provided block or you can provide your own block as well in your case uh, you have to identify the pool you have to define it or or you can also enable different things you can go with the tenancy uh, the default tenancy is suggested otherwise you can customize as well next you got uh, tags if you want to create it will automatically created by the name so tags are useful once you create different IAM roles and you connect with different users it would be easily identifiable say if you have multiple VPCs on there and you get confused you can locate them with the tags otherwise just leave it by default and create a VPC so this is how you create a VPC in few simple steps next we can configure a lot of settings networking configurations here in detail uh, you can find them most useful information the vpc id uh, and different settings the dhcp options uh, you can check the cidrs the flow logs you can create a flow log on itself you can create various things here you got various options you can enable the filter to accept or reject various kinds of traffic or you can have the maximum aggregation interval defined you can add uh, various things destination for log details you can select a log group to go to glue crawler glue crawler AWS glue is a powerful service which automatically takes a lot of things and if you provide a glue crawler it will fetch the log information otherwise you can go to the cloud watch or configure cloud trail settings and uh, next you got to define s3 bucket for ARN uh, where information could be stored uh, so what is s3 s3 is simple storage service on aws it's a simple block storage that provides a bucket just to navigate here you can create a lot of bucket bucket is like like a folder where you upload files and it will be uniquely identifiable you have to just copy the ARN of your bucket that you want to add here uh, ARN for Amazon resource name uh, this is a unique ID given to each instance or service created on the cloud for various kind of services even the VPN have its own ARN if you want to connect a VPN to EC2 you have to provide the ARN and we have provided the S3 ARN here so it will be automatically identified with this uniquely S3 bucket and next hit create if you want to create these things and this is how uh, we create a VPC connected to S3 and other services. You can go to the actions 
and you will find various options you can edit the dhcp option setting dynamic host control protocol and different kind of things here uh, various network parameters are set there and once you go to the vpcs you got there two vpcs created the first one that has no name is the default vpc and second one is the vpc that we created right now you can manage more network settings here uh, but leave it for now here uh, we got this same information here so on aws uh, it is easy to create a vpc and you can always connect it to a different kind of services across different regions of the globe so try to create your own vpc uh, on aws keep learning and keep moving ahead you are going to learn more in the coming lessons hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a subnet on aws so let's start with this so this is our vpc dashboard where you can configure various networking things and after we have created a vpc next step is to create a subnet so what is a subnet subnet is a logical subdivision of an ip address so once you create an ip address you got one ip address and you can divide this single ip address into multiple networks that is called as a subnet so here we can create a subnet just go to the subnets and here by default we got six different subnets created and just go to the right hand side top right to create a new subnet if you want to create so you have to provide the name of the vpc that you want to connect uh, so you can go with the default one or one that we created later on so we have used the new vpc and it automatically fetches the associated vpc cidrs that we have defined in the vpc next you need to provide some subnet settings first let's start with create providing a name for the subnet just write any name we will be using the same name infrastructure uh, it infra and we use this subnet we will prefix it next we need to define the region where this will be available we take the us east virginia region and you can provide this thing next you have to define ip version 4 cidr block that you want to use it's slash 0 slash 8 16 24 or a different option you, there are various custom options you can choose from them next you can provide various kinds of tags but this is an optional thing uh, you can leave it you can create multiple subnets from the same dashboard you can add different subnets just provide the name for the second subnet if you want to create or leave it leave it as it is if you want to create one subnet just provide details for the one if you want to create multiple subnets you can create at once and also you can go to the dashboard and create one by one so subnets are important part on the vpc to handle different kind of requests on the cloud it works in the same way that other applications are deployed on the server be it on premise or the cloud networking is there everywhere so you want to have better control with the help of cloud you easily get control of all the properties at one place so creating a vpc on aws is a uh, not that much difficult to apply because all the networking physical infrastructure is handled by the aws cloud and you are just a controller here so you have to provide this thing you can choose the appropriate block if it, there is some error it will show you the error or alert or otherwise just try to rectify it uh, the possibility of uh, an error is generally because there is a mismatch between the uh, CIDR that you define in the VPC and the subnets that you create. So it is automatically connected to the VPC so it must follow the protocol or the format that is defined on the VPC. And later on after creating subnets you can create a routing table, you can have the internet gateway and other things configured right there so here it is we have used 10.0.0.0 slash 24 so it is here and you can go with the create subnet 
once uh, you have defined it is being created so this is a custom subnet that we created on aws you can create multiple subnets so for our new vpc we have one subnet all other subnets was for the default vpc that comes created with the aws and here we can create our own subnets so creating a subnet is not that difficult process it's easy but if you are a network professional you can customize various properties according to your organizations or infrastructure requirements so here on the downward side you got various options for route table network access control list cidrs and different options you got the subnet arn that you can connect with various kinds of cloud instances whenever you require it to connect just the way we connected the s3 bucket uh, in the creating a vpc session and here you can use this thing you can go to the subnet option on the virtual private cloud dashboard to identify various subnets and you can go into details of each subnet and customize it later on try to create various subnets and vpc on aws keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating and attaching the internet gateway to your virtual private cloud on aws so let's start with this so we have created a vpc and created various subnet for it and next step is to attach an internet gateway so that you can allow you to access it access your vpc across the internet so let's do it so just go to the internet gateway option right below the route tables and here we have one default internet gateway and it has been set to the default vpc uh, that's been created with the aws account so we can either customize it or create a new internet gateway from scratch you can create multiple internet gateways and attach them to different vpcs here you are going to learn these things so just click on creating an internet gateway and this is an option to create a gateway so first you need to provide the name of this new gateway uh, just provide any name here let's name it vpc underscore it infrastructure uh, you could provide any custom name as you like just keep the name of your internet gateway subnet and vpc little bit common so that if you have multiple of such uh, network components you may get confused which subnet or internet gateway is related to uh, what vpc or so on so i am using the same notation here next step is to select your vpc uh, internet gateway and go to actions and attach to a vpc so we have created a internet gateway and we have to attach it so here you have to select from the available vpcs and just select this thing uh, and next step is to select the platform that you want to connect it is just like a backend server uh, i'm using the linux you can go with a windows version or other linux distro it's your choice uh, you can check it here's uh, unix windows and this linux uh, this will be used to access your vpc or other network components through a command line and here you got a desktop applications that you can access currently we are using the console aws console and you can use the cli or powershell to access it next uh, it is connected when you are done at, you can attach and more after you have attached a vpc you can also detach it the same way you go to actions you can find the details you can detach it from a vpc uh, let's go to the details and here we got some information about this vpc we got the vpc id uh, the gateway id and we can use it just try to detach and once you're sure you can detach so it's easy to attach an internet gateway but it's an important step uh, before making your vpc accessible through internet so if you have an organization that have some applications that require to be deployed on a vpc first create a vpc then add, add some subnets and then you can create internet gateway route tables and much more so these are the network components try creating various network components on your own create an internet gateway and attach it to vpc
keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a table in amazon dynamo db no sql database so let's start with this so just go to aws console and here just navigate to the database services on amazon and here we got multiple kind of database services uh, we can go with the rds dynamo db neptune elastic cache and much more here we are going to use dynamo db so this is a dashboard for dynamo db here uh, you can find some details about dynamo db if you scroll down uh, but we already know that it is a no sql databases so you can use json and other formats that can be used for storing table it is highly scalable and it is very fast on amazon so just go to create table button here you will be asked some uh, settings and configurations that you can define in order to create a DynamoDB table. So first choose a name for the table. Let's take inventory manager. Here we are creating this table and next we need to define the partition key. So what is a partition key? Partition key is a primary key that is a unique column that is used to identify each individual row separately. So people who are not familiar with database uh, could understand this way. So you got a table that consists of multiple rows and columns. And here in order to identify each row uniquely, uh, there is a primary key. So generally we take numbers as a primary key. Then you can also have a sort key based on which your field can be sorted or otherwise you can leave it then you have to go with the settings the default settings or a custom settings if you want to go with the customized settings you can customize a few properties in here like read consistency write consistency uh, item read per second item write per second you can define it or just go with the standard options next we got the custom options here you can define the capacity mode on demand or provision so on demand is uh, based on the demand if there is a more demand for the database it will scale otherwise leave it or if you go with the provision you have a predefined set or range of the size of the database that has been provisioned say if you take 10 gb provision or the maximum capacity per unit you have to define it you can define the target utilization percentage beforehand for the read and write capacity on the database so if you don't go with the provision you can choose the demand so in on demand if you have a low uh, demand you can be fine but sometimes there could be a spike in the demand for read or write capacity in that case your cost will go up but your uh, database will function very normally on the AWS. If you go with the provision and your demand for read or write operations exceed the provision value, your database may not function properly. So based on the scenario that you're working, you can choose with either of those. Then you can uh, select the encryption. You can go for the default Amazon DynamoDB encryption or so on. You can read more about the DynamoDB pricing options here for the on demand as well as provision values. So it differs based on your requirements. So if you're a person that's doing some research and learning about this thing, you could go with the without provision, you can go with the on demand. Otherwise, if you're running a big organization, you can go with either on demand or provision. It depends. Once you are done, just go back with all the settings and hit create table. So once your table is created, it will reflect to the DynamoDB dashboard. Here we got one table that the status is showing being created. And once it has been created, it will be available. You can go to the settings or overview of this newly created table in DynamoDB. And here we got multiple options. Uh, you got indices, you got monitor, you got global tables 
and various options that you can select. You can find the various matrices here. You can also connect it with the CloudWatch in order to get more matrices in detail. Otherwise, this is a snapshot. So you can view these uh, matrices in detail on CloudWatch console. Otherwise, just leave it here. So this is the CloudWatch console and you can find it in depth. So once you have created a table, you may start adding some values for the database or you can upload your database on S3 and redirect it to this. After your database is available on DynamoDB, you can start querying them or connect with your applications, be it mobile, web, IoT or anything else. If you want to create more tables using DynamoDB, you have to follow the similar step. You could create a range of tables on this thing. On the left hand side, you've got various options for managing this DynamoDB console. Uh, you got QL editor, items, uh, export to S3 and other options. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hey, welcome back friends. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about adding a new item to your DynamoDB table using form and JSON. So let's start with this. So this is the DynamoDB dashboard and we have created a table called inventory manager. Uh, you can create multiple tables and add items. So there are various ways to add different rows or columns content to your table. Uh, this is the best way when you have few records. If you have multiple records, you can always link another database, import from other tables or you can use S3 bucket. So here just go to items in the DynamoDB dashboard and here you've got two options scan and query so query is used for running SQL queries and scan uh, here we can scan the table uh, next go to create an item this will allow you to create a row so here we have we can define column as there is no column defined so in the first row we have to define the columns as well so the attribute name is the name of column or attribute uh, let's have serial number that is the primary key then we have the product and we can define it the type data type so here we define it as a string type so within the values you provide some value that is considered as a cell value say here attribute name is the name of column or field value is the corresponding row value and then we have data type so you can keep on adding new attributes. So first time when you are creating a table, first column and first row, uh, you need to define a lot of things. And after that, you can just copy it and replicate it very quickly. So I will teach you how you can do this thing. So on the right hand side, top right, you see two options here, form and JSON. So right now we are using the form. So form is simple data entry option where you can just write anything defined using a GUI editor. Uh, it does not require any coding background, so you can easily add. And when you use JSON, uh, it will show the script and you can just replicate it very easily. So here let us define the first column. Here we have the product name, the category, the quantity that is a number and is available as a boolean, true and false values. So you can have multiple data types. Uh, as you can see here once you create the first column is available so our table has of one record with multiple columns and now let's create one more item so here we can have multiple rows in a table if you have uh, a few records in a table you can manually type or you can just add copy from other database other tables be it DynamoDB, so it will be very easy to use the backup and migrate with other things. You can import a S3 table, S3 buckets, and other options as well. Best way is to use JSON. So, if you have some records, say for example, if you have 50 records and that is already created in JSON file, stored somewhere on your computer or other place on the internet, you can just copy that JSON script just paste it here it will create attributes very easily 
and DynamoDB is a NoSQL database so it is a JSON based database it is not a relative database although you can use SQL query to perform it here we can have multiple columns so for example if you uh, don't want to provide value to a particular column just leave that okay so no need to define that attribute name and it will be empty here we have defined everything say if you want to omit the quantity just don't write the quantity and now next move to the JSON and here when you select JSON instead of the form here you've got the same option but as JSON so first just uh, select uh, some existing row and here go to JSON just copy all the code here the JSON code and after that we were going to create a new item or new row and then we will just modify the value field and everything would be in text so in that case we don't have to click multiple times so here just change the primary key a few number change the value of the product here you can find the value written in the quotes in red color so it is very easily to add it so you got the five different attributes you have to just change the values if you want if you don't want to provide any value just leave it empty within the quotes just don't write any value so it will be considered as no value or null or also you can also write null in capital as well so here we got this thing and once you are done just hit create item as we do with the form so this is how you create different kinds of rows in a table using form and json in dynamodb so it is very easy to create items next after you have some items some row and columns on the table you can perform different query operations by writing sql queries so here let's create some more columns you can provide the values let's change the value for product you can have multiple products like ink pad you can don't forget to change the serial key because uh, serial key must be unique although you can have different kinds of product quantity other columns uh, that can have duplicate values say for example we have the stationary information and we can have multiple products as ink pad but no serial key can be common if you try to create this thing it will show some error it won't allow you to create because you have already defined it as a primary key so once you have defined anything as a primary key it must be unique in order to perform SQL operations very easily so here we have created four different rows and different columns in a table and next we are going to learn about SQL query so try to create your own table in DynamoDB add different attributes columns and values keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you are going to learn about running and writing sql queries in dynamodb so let's start with this so you can write sql queries using particle editor on dynamodb so let's start with this just select the particle editor on the dashboard and here uh, when you expand view in the table uh, by clicking on the triple dots you would find various options you can add a query to editor let us run this first query and here it shows uh, some items uh, so four tables records has matched so what was our query it select everything from the table so here we got the inventory manager table and we select everything so select asterisk if you want to show some columns some specific columns you can define in place of asterisk for those who don't know sql this is a few tips I know most of you must already be familiar with SQL you know already know how to write SQL queries so it will be easy for you just uh, learn about how you can use it and use this dashboard so here we can either view this information the fetch record in table view it will show you as a row or you can use the JSON view so if you got the JSON view you can copy the JSON and use in various applications that can be connected you can always connect ARN on the cloud that is a different thing so JSON could be used in various scenarios it would be used as a formation of another table you can use this output to create a different table as well and there could be multiple domains it could be linked to a web mobile or different kind of applications here you can all also customize this query you can also save this query 
and here let us customize it by writing some where clause here we apply the where quantity is greater than 10 you can also apply different conditions you can also insert some rows in that case you can run the insert command you can use the update you can delete a table you can drop a table you could do everything and anything that can be done using sql with a database or a table you can run multiple queries simultaneously as well so here when we executed this query it produced a single output just expand this icon here you can find these things so sometimes uh, in the dynamo we understand this thing that uh, they wrote different queries by default for you so in that case it could be handy you don't need to write everything from scratch so you can use this thing say like if you want to uh, scan the table you can just click on here it will write the code for a scanning table you can set an item by updating the table you can select the table name you can query the table perform various queries on the table using where clause and other clauses as well you can drop an item from the table as well so here uh, we use the update table it updates the inventory manager and by setting some attribute to a different value so you can change the value of a particular attribute by writing this command and uh, this query where a certain condition is matched say let us write some attribute you can define it say category is equals to uh, different thing you can select the category is sanitizer and you can define the where uh, the condition you can define serial number equals to 102 or a different thing and you can hit the run to execute this thing they produce no output query performed successfully but there was no output so that means no record is fetched you can try again if you think that it doesn't work you can try to change certain variables maybe there could be some spelling mistake try to troubleshoot these things if your query is performed successfully but there could be some syntax error you could just go through it to solve this thing here you can also write a query for deleting this table where uh, or deleting certain rows from the table Sometimes there are say thousand of rows or records on the table and you just want to delete four or five of them. You can base and define it using the where clause. You can use a lot of things. You can also perform various join operations. You can customize the table. You could write procedures or perform advanced SQL queries as well. So DynamoDB is a powerful database on the cloud and you can use do almost anything if you don't want to use the particle editor for writing sql queries you can also use aws cli command line interface and you can perform by writing various queries in the command line so if you are quite familiar with oracle database or some databases where you used to write queries on the command line editor you can get it very useful for you so here we wrote different queries you can create more tables you could add different records and start with this query once you are done with this thing if you want to download the output of the table it can be saved as a csv format or excel format and you can use in various spreadsheet editors so it is very interactive so once you're building some application on DynamoDB first go through the DynamoDB interface itself perform various operations create table perform SQL queries and then try to integrate it with different other applications uh, you can also get the output of the table and use the spreadsheet information generate JSON for that and then you can use it by creating a different table as well so Try to perform various operations on DynamoDB table. You start writing queries on particle editor. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friends. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about a scan and query option in DynamoDB. 
and you will also learn to filter a table based on certain conditions and parameters. So let's start with this. So when you go to the DynamoDB dashboard and here you got uh, the table and the items. You already learned how to create an item, row, column, attributes in a table and you already know how to create tables. So after we are done with a few basic things set up in the table, we can perform a scan and query operations. So with the query, you need to execute SQL uh, queries and filter option is available in both these things. So just expand this filter option and here you can define the attribute, type, condition and the value. You can leave the fields that you don't want and you can always add multiple filters simultaneously. And once you hit the run, it will perform the filter operation. Say for example, here we select a category and we will check whether the condition matches. So when the condition is equals to stationary, it will start running. So what does a filter do? So filter will just sort out your table where the certain conditions are matched. Say here you got multiple options to choose for condition. You can have a greater than, the equals to, not equals to, less than or equals to. These could be uh, in the values. Uh, numerical values as well as a string you can use the between operation to select a range of values say between 100 and 2000 you can have these things then you can have exist so it will check whether this value exists or not then you can check the contains whether this thing contains it can be applied to a string as well as numerical values it does not contains or begins with so begins with will have a regular expression it will check whether the string begins with say for example if you have to sort name of the people based on whether they begin with letter a so you can select whether they begin with letter a so it will show the name of people in the table that begins with a and you can have different kinds of filters as well so here we can select the boolean value if it is equals to true it will show you the thing and when you're going to run a query you need to provide the partition key as well the serial number you can define the primary key otherwise leave it so you can always uh, filter table based on certain conditions or the partition key primary key but most of the time we don't know the primary key but we are familiar with the values so it's better to use filters so if you have a big table, giant table, say consisting of uh, 10,000 or 1 million rows, so it is better to apply filter before running a query. Just for the sake of convenience for people who don't know how the things work here, uh, when you are running a database on an experimental basis for learning purpose, you can have uh, things like uh, 1,000 columns, 2,000 columns at most. And your query would be performed very quickly very easily but when you have millions of records and you are building a, a server side web application for a big corporate company then cost is the real thing so once you apply execute a query it will check each and every row so you don't want to run the query 10 million times on 10 million row values so it will have a large cost so in order to optimize the cost you can use the filters so filters will scan only a particular columns that matches a given condition. So in that case, you can use keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friends here in this lesson. You're going to learn about deleting a table in DynamoDB and how you can restore a table again from a backup. So let's start with this. So we are currently on the DynamoDB dashboard and on the left hand side, we got various options. So if you want to delete a table, create a table, you have to go to the table option. And if you want to customize the subnet groups, clusters, parameter groups, you can go into there. So if you want to delete a subnet group, you can select a subnet group and delete them from the actions. And if you want to create a subnet group or parameter group, you can create right from there. So they are different from tables. So if you want to configure subnet and parameter groups, you can go to the DAX settings, the clusters. And if you want to customize the table, uh, SQL queries, you can go to the table section. So we can configure these things. 
So just go to the table options on the DynamoDB dashboard. And here, uh, when we try to delete a table, we will get certain options. Just go to the actions and on just next to it, there's a delete option. On the first line, it was written that delete all CloudWatch alarms if you want to delete it. And if you want to create a backup before deleting, you can select the second option. So if you select the second option, it will create a backup before the table is actually deleted. So it is a safety parameter. You should check it if your data, database or table is important. Otherwise, you can leave it. If you're just doing for experimental or learning purpose, you can create a table, delete a table and so on. But if you're dealing with the real life scenarios and the big corporates and startups anywhere else, if you're working on some serious project, it is better to have a backup before committing to delete a database. And how you can restore it from a backup in case you accidentally deleted a database, just go to the backup option and here you can provide the name of restore table and select various options. You can choose to select uh, restore the entire table or you can restore the table without secondary indexes. So if you want to restore the table without indexes, secondary index, you can choose the second option. Otherwise, just choose the first option to restore entire table. Then you can also select a destination AWS region. So if you want to restore the table in the same region that data table existed previously before deleting, you can restore there. Otherwise, you can also change the region. So for example, if you created a date table uh, in the North Virginia region, and if you want to now create uh, restore it in the London or Frankfurt region, you can do so by choosing the second option. And once it is done, it will be available in your table option. So as the status is showing restoring, it will be restored in some time. And if shows are done or active, your database is live. So this is how you create a backup before deleting an actual table. And you already know how to restore a table if you accidentally perform delete operation. So in the real world, in the corporate and wherever you are going to use the AWS, this thing could be useful in various scenarios. So try to create a backup, perform delete operations on DynamoDB. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi there, welcome to this lesson where we're going to learn about creating a RDS or relational database on Amazon Web Services. So let's start with this. So currently we have logged into AWS Management Console and there you can go to any service and create an instance for AWS services. Here we got a lot of services and just go to the database and select RDS. Also, you can hit the search option and there you can search RDS. So RDS stands for Relational Database Service on Amazon. And this is the home page or dashboard for RDS where you can manage various tables, databases, query editor, perform, find performance insights and much other things on RDS. Here we got two different options. As you can see here in the create database option, uh, we can either create a database from scratch or create a database by restoring uh, content from S3 bucket. S3 is a simple storage service that is an object storage service on AWS and where we can drop any information. So if we select this option, restore from S3 database, here you got some options. Uh, you, you have to define the engine type. Let's select uh, MySQL or you can select Amazon Aurora. Then next step is to select an IAM role. So this is for authentication purpose, identity and access management. If you have not created it, you can go to IAM, search IAM and just create a new IAM role. So this would be used for authentication purpose. So when you are using an AWS service that requires another service access and roles, then you need an IAM. Also for other purposes as well, for connecting to different web identity, another account or SAML authentication, you would, would use IAM. So here we, go, we would go to create a role 
for AWS service and here just select RDS we select a RDS uh, role and here we can have the filter policy for same RDS and just select it once you are done just uh, hit the review option and create this thing so we have created a role for relational database service on AWS so this will allow any RDS application that uses this role to access other services on AWS we just need to copy the ARN or Amazon resource name for this IAM role and just paste it here or you can create a new role right from here option right from uh, this RDS dashboard or you can select from the existing roles so we could select an existing role that we have already created or you can define your own ways then you got the policy documents if you want to expand you can find it next you need to configure various options here uh, like database instance class you could use a standard or you can use the memory optimized class or burst table class based on different scenarios you can define the credentials for master username and password or you can generate a password for all this thing you can choose a storage type such as ssd uh, storage auto scaling you can enable auto scaling uh, auto scaling is uh, a feature that allows you to scale the size of your database based on the request and the demand so it could scale and you can also select the availability and durability on multi amazon regions you could select the connectivity for virtual private cloud vpc we have already created a vpc earlier so we can attach it or by default you get a default vpc on aws you can use that one also then you can define the vpc security groups subnet you can create a subnet mask you can create vpc security groups you can select the availability zone for this vpc or you can be global as well then you would need to provide additional configuration if you want to choose a database port that would be used for accessing this database you can define it or set it to default so here we provide a database port for for this thing then you can choose the database authentication it could be password authentication a password and IAM com combination of both or you can choose it then you got various other options as well like parameters encryption settings the performance insights you can select the backup retention period if you want your backup to be automated you can enable it automated backup so it will take the backup of a fresh content of the snapshot of the database over a predefined set of period say on a weekly basis or monthly basis fortnight or anywhere else then you can generate the log reports you can find it there and you can also calculate the cost incurred here so this was for amazon mysql engine you can choose to have amazon aurora db as well in order to create a rds database on the cloud so creating an rds database look hectic but if you are confused just keep settings in the default if you are not sure about or you can just learn by creating a few databases and how it functions based on that otherwise if you are an advanced user you can fine tune every settings and configurations as per your requirement keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friends here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a relational database or amazon rds database using Aurora engine and other engine types so let's start with this so we are currently on the Amazon RDS dashboard and here we can create multiple databases based on different engines so in the previous lesson you learned how to create an RDS database what are the various options that you get and here we are going to explore other engine types as well so hit to create a database and here you got various options here you got 
six different engine types Amazon Aurora, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle, uh, and Microsoft SQL Server. So you can select each one of them to know the properties, what are various configurations that you get with each of them. Say uh, if we create uh, using the Amazon Aurora DB, it will be mostly free, and here you can have a lot of advantage. So when you are doing it for educational purpose or for just research, uh, for creating a database, performing queries and other things, you could go with uh, the default Amazon Aurora. Otherwise, if you want some specifications like Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server, you can just select those engine types. So here, if we select the Aurora DB, we get various options like addition. You can select the Postgre compatible or MySQL compatible. You get the capacity type either if you want to have a provision or you can choose the serverless. So if you choose a provisioned one, you can get the size of the database predefined and the operations for read and write are defined beforehand. You can manage manage various instance types and much more. And if you choose to have a serverless environment capacity, uh, in this way you can specify the minimum and maximum am amount of resources that you could need for scalability. Then you can define the engine version. You can go to the show details. You record uh, got various options. By default, it is set to Aurora PostgreSQL. If you select the uh, Postgre compatible, if you choose MySQL compatible, so it will get the default version. You can change the version type based on your requirement. Next, you can choose the template type either for development and testing purpose or for the production environment. So if you are working on a production environment, live data that is just for to production, you can choose this thing. Or if you if it is currently for development and testing, just for research and it is not currently deployed on real world applications, you can choose to have a dev test environment. Then you need to define a master username and password for accessing your database resources. So you can have this thing and you can note it down anywhere if you want to access it furthermore. Then you get uh, the database instance class. You can choose the burst table class or memory optimized classes like R types and much more. If you're not sure, just choose the default one. Then you can choose with the availability and durability. You can have a multiple Amazon zone uh, deployment option. You can choose to create a Aurora DB or if you want to have a replica, you can choose to have a replica. Then you need to provide the connectivity for your uh, resource. Uh, it is VPC. Uh, you can connect a virtual private cloud that is already created. If you want, you can create uh, and provision the subnets and other things as well. By default, with an AWS account, you get a default VPC. So if you are not sure about configuring VPC, just go with the default one. And if you want to configure various network properties like internet gateways and other things, you can go to the VPC dashboard to fine tune those things. Next, you need to provide the database port number through which you can access your resources. And you need to choose authentication method for accessing this database resources. You can choose to have a password or a combination of AWS IAM, identity and access management and password. So in that case, it will first authenticate whether you have got the permission and the rules uh, to access a resource and then it will check the password. So it is better if you want to have a more security advantage, you can choose to have a both option. It is just like a two factor authentication that you use with a general email or social media accounts that you have. Then you got uh, other options as well. You can configure these things. Uh, so once you are creating a cloud database, the more emphasis is to configure things very precisely uh, the way you want because uh, your uh, your focus is not on the deployment section. It will be focused uh, on afterwards. Now, uh, once you have a database running on the cloud, then you can focus on writing queries, performing operations. But beforehand, you need to provision it. If you're working for a role as a solution architect or some database administrator on the cloud 
or various other profiles you can you must have a knowledge about how to provision various resources accordingly in order to match the demand that you require as well as the compatibility over different platforms by focusing on the cost as a parameter as well so you can also go to the advanced configurations if you require anything you can decide the additional configurations the backup encryption performance insights monitoring and other things that you get here once you are done just hit to create database and your database will be created and if there is some kind of error message just like this just refer to the options that you get and you can create it so uh, this was this error uh, may appear simply because we don't have a VPC and if we the VPC that we provided was not associated with any availability zone so thus it showed some error and when we switch to another VPC that was fetched to uh, availability zone it allowed us to create a database and here it is being created so once your database is ready you can perform various operations on a database like uploading a table performing SQL queries and much more keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about monitoring various database utilization parameters and other factors on Amazon RDS or relational database so let's start with this so after you have created a database on the cloud it will show you in the database dashboard so currently we have got one database identifier uh, database one uh, that is hosted in a US East region having one instance size and currently it is shown as available and the next thing is it is being it is creating the database instance for this database uh, it is based on the Aurora PostgreSQL engine type and you can go to the connection details where you can find the master username the password it's a randomly generated password uh, you can find the endpoint where you, you can use this endpoint to connect to your database uh, using any application command line AWS CLI or other things so once you create a database you can start creating table row column records everything else you can have the SQL enabled you can uh, create a database based on the SQL queries you can perform various operations uh, CRUD operations on this database and different tables using S by writing SQL queries so you can run SQL queries in two ways you can first uh, use the query editor on the Amazon RDS or you can use the AWS CLI for accessing it so once your database is running it's better to check various parameters you can go to the actions tab to find some options here you can add an AWS region you can delete this instance you can stop it you can pause it you can perform various things and if you want to keep track of the performance indicators you can find it on the left hand side you can find the connectivity and security you can go to the monitoring tab you can go to the log tab when you check the monitor you can find the CPU utilization percentage the database connections how much it is connected the feeable memories write operations read operations and much more so if your uh, uh, database is overloaded with uh, write request read request uh, CPU utilization parameters you can optimize you can decide what you can do with your database whether you need to upgrade it to a higher provision version you have to change your the processing type you have to create multiple instances you can choose to have auto scaling enabled and so on you can decide various things so database utilization is an important thing and you can go to the performance insights to find more insights about the database you have to just select the database and here uh, you can find various insights so you can select uh, the view type whether if you want to have a minute based views hourly basis and much more you can also go to the snapshot option you can refer it here you can find the snapshots of your database uh, the real-time snapshot you can export this database into the s3 Amazon s3 
and you can find various options as well. So once you create an RDS database on AWS, it's better to just uh, keep track of various options that you get here. You can check everything whether your database is running properly. This is a part of a administrator, cloud administrator. And you are not a developer right here when you are managing these things. Although if you're, you could be a developer, you should be aware of how your database is performing because it is hosted on the cloud. It's not running on premise. So you have to decide what you can do with this. You can go with the additional, uh, you can modify your database cluster as well. Go to various properties and much more. So first create a database on RDS. Go to the monitoring tab, check the utilization and decide what you can do with your database for optimizing your resources and utilization. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about database actions query editor and other options on amazon rds relational database services so let's start with this we we'll just go to the dashboard and select the databases on rds here you got various options as actions so just select the action tab and you got various options you can stop a database you can start a database activity stream and other things so once you want to create an activity stream, you have to define various properties. You have to select a master key. Uh, you have to select the database activity stream mode, whether it could be asynchronous or synchronous. And you can choose to decide whether you want to apply it immediately or you can schedule it for a maintenance window. So you can create an activity stream here and you can select other options like you can create a reader you can add a reader to your database and it could provide you various properties you can stop our database you can change the region you can add a region as well uh, like where it is hosted uh, the destination region if you want to change the region of your database where it is hosted you can change it say for example if it is hosted in uh, us east virginia region you can change it to Frankfurt, London, Singapore, Mumbai, anywhere else on the AWS cloud. You can choose to have a database instance class type defined, although we have already defined it when we are creating database. But if you want to customize it later on, you can choose to customize it. If you want to change, uh, perform various operations like additional configuration, you can change the port number and other things as well. Some properties could be changed later on after creating a database, but some properties could not be changed afterwards. So just keep a check. Some properties are only read only when you create a database. Also, you can create a replica for auto scaling. You can also create a clone for this database. So what is the clone? So once you have a database A, you can create a clone that is a replica of this uh, main database and clone can be used for a various purpose like it could be used as a shred it could be used as a backup it could serve a different scenario different uh, application for example if you have uh, a database a same database and you want to create two different databases that are connected to any application one for china and one for us so the users for china are logically separate with the users of usa so if there is any misfortune or some kind of error or anything happens with a database that is uh, for chinese users it won't affect the us database so there could be various scenarios like if you want to implement some security parameters you can also have this thing in mind you can also have a log report you can export it with the log informations uh, at for tracking and auditing purpose. If you have a database, you should know when and from where the read and write operations are performed on a database. For that, you need to create a log report and it could be used for auditing purpose and can be checked with the AWS Cloud Watch. Here uh, we generate a database, but it also creates a lot of things that can be monitored. Say here, if you go to the monitoring tab, 
it shows some parameters like CPU utilization that has dropped. Once it has been created, it utilized a lot of CPU, but currently as there is no demand, it has lower down. Then you can find the read operations, the variable memories, database connections, and other parameters that you can monitor later on. Then you got other options as well, like you can restore to point in time and add replica to auto scaling and other options. If you want to stop this database anytime, you can stop. So if your database is in production and sometime you want this database to stop, you create a clone for this. It could be drawn into the production and the current database is can be turned to the developer mode or anything like that. If you worked on a, any DevOps project, you must be, must be familiar with this thing. Otherwise, just uh, you could learn it anytime later. Then if you want to write some SQL queries, you can go to query editor where you can perform SQL operations. Like here, we wrote a code for create foreign table. You can create a different table as well. You can update a table by adding some rows, columns. You can drop the table. You can write any SQL query. You can select uh, to view some informations. You can also save a query. Once you write a query, you can save it for maybe because uh, some later point of time, you want to execute the same logic uh, with a change in parameters you can see. So here, if you want to uh, write a complex SQL query, you can write it and save it. No need to use any notepad or anywhere else to save this document. It will be saved on the cloud. So anywhere you want to access it, you can access it from your office, from your home, anywhere around the globe. You can clear it, you can change the database, say here if you, you got also got this option to write a SQL query that is connected to a database. So if you want to execute it, the same query on a different database, you can change the database. Currently we have only one database, so we cannot change it. But if you have multiple databases and you can run the same query over and over again on different databases. So this makes it very easy and intuitive for a lot of administration tasks and this makes it easier. You can uh, just experiment by writing a lot of SQL queries and you can perform it. You can either run it with uh, the command line interface for AWS if you are more kind of Oracle user or a Microsoft SQL Server user. You feel it when you run it on a CLI interface. That's okay, you can use it as well, or otherwise you can use this thing. If you are going to uh, run your SQL queries uh, using command line interface, not on the AWS console, you have to just provide the endpoints and you can just run it from there. So here we got various parameters that has been shown and we can customize the counter matrices like uh, various other op various options that we have performed it has been based on the time you can also change the time zone currently it is showing the time zone for utc you can change this to ist gmt uh, other time zones as well you can filter your metrics based on the hourly uh, 24 hours weekly basis minute basis so you can have the granularity adjusted based on your requirement so if you want to have a real-time scenario, you can fine it tune to it lower levels for granularity or abstract level. Keep learning and keep moving ahead.